So now we're going to talk about factoring. I have a lot of students that tell me semester after semester after semester, different students every year always tell me they can factor, they just don't know how to start. And so I want to do one to just kind of go through the process of what do I do, how do I do it. I have a variety of videos on factoring different things. Um, I will tell you, for me, when I have a trinomial, I do not teach guess and check. It changes every problem and it's always this random set. You're always just, you're guessing. You don't have a clear, consistent path to follow. So if you're struggling with trinomials and how to factor trinomials, check out my videos on the AC method. The AC method is extremely consistent. You do the exact same thing every time, so you don't have to worry about things changing on you. And if it can't factor, the AC method will actually tell you when it is prime, so you're not taking a risk and assuming it's prime or as you may not have guessed the right thing. Uh, it also keeps you from running into this, well, I've tried two or three things, I don't wanna waste any more time, so I'm just gonna guess and say it doesn't work. When really it might have been the third or fourth guess that would have made it work. So check out my AC, AC method videos if you want to see how to factor trinomials. I have one that can be factored and one that's prime. So you can see how the AC method actually works. So for here, we're going to factor this one. For my students that struggle with factoring, they tell me they just don't know where to start. I've gotten factoring down to three steps. Step number one. Always and forever, no matter what your question is, if your directions say factor, or if your problem involves any sort of factoring, you need to start with the GCF. Step one is always GCF. So we need to look at our numbers, 12, 6, 48, and 24. Are they all divisible by the same thing? You can say yes, they're all divisible by two. So if I divide them all by two, I'm gonna put the two outside, make sure it gets written down, it cannot just disappear. And math things have to go somewhere. They can't just disappear. 12x cubed divided by two, 6x cubed. We didn't take an x out because there wasn't an x in every piece. Negative 6x squared divided by two, negative 3x squared. Negative 48x divided by 2, negative 24x, and 24 divided by 2 is 12. Okay? The problem that has arisen here is we took out a common factor, but if you look at the inside, 6, 3, 24, and 12, there's still a GCF. So whereas we took out a common factor, we didn't take out the greatest common factor. This is a very common thing to happen. So when you're doing GCF or any type of factoring, you always need to check the inside of your parentheses. Make sure there's not a greatest common factor left over. If there is, you're not done. So we still have a GCF of three. Right. So two wasn't correct. Two is a, G a common factor, but not the greatest. I'm going to multiply those together and repeat this step. I don't want to just take the 3 out because that gets done incorrectly quite often. But if a 2 and a 3 come out, that's going to be a 6. So I'm going to repeat that step by using the larger number. 12x cubed divided by 6, 2x cubed. Negative 6x squared divided by 6, it's negative x squared. Negative 48x divided by 6, negative 8x, and positive 24 divided by 6, positive 4. Now I have 2, 1, 8, and 4. No GCF because I don't have a number here. No GCF of letters because I don't have a letter at the end. So step 1 is GCF. That is just that though. It is step 1. We are not done yet. Once you get the GCF out, what I tell my students is that GCF can really get in the way sometimes. It can really get to where it's confusing us. I'm going to take this GCF and I'm going to jump it over here. I'm going to put my answer over here. So this is going to be my answer. It's four terms. 
So I know it's going to end up with two sets of parentheses, three, four terms, even two terms. They tend to end up with two sets of parentheses. So I'm going ahead, setting my answer up. That way I don't forget that six. If you just kind of ignore it, and then when you get to your answer, you forget to include it. And then my students, they lose at least a point for not putting it in their answer because whereas they've done the work, if you're at your job and you do something but it never gets reported, it never gets inputted, it never actually gets to take effect and gets to part of your results, then who knows that you did it. And so we need to make sure we're keeping track of things and getting things from when we did them into our results that are gonna come out of whatever we're trying to do. Okay. So your step two, because we've only done step one, Step two is identify how many terms do we have. How many terms do we have? That six is already gone, so I don't have to worry about it. Inside the parentheses, I have one, two, three, and four terms. If you only had two, this is not this scenario, if you only had two and you've already done the GCF, then you're going to use a formula. You can use the difference of squares or the sum and difference of cubes. Those are formulas we need to have memorized. If it were three, which is not this case, but if it were three, you're going to do the AC method. Some people do guess and check. Some people do the AC method. There's a bunch of different methods out there. Again, my preference is the AC method. When I started teaching that instead of guess and check, my averages on factoring tests shot up by like 30 points. And people were actually doing really well at factoring rather than fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting with it. So AC method, I highly suggest just because I've seen the results with guess and check versus with AC method because I've taught both in the past and now I only teach AC method. If you have two, you have a formula. Three is the AC method, possibly guess and check depending on what your teacher says. If you're in my lecture class, it's the AC method. And four terms, that's gonna be grouping. So four would be grouping. And that's where how you get started, because people say, well, I just don't know how to start. Get started with GCF. Then identify how many terms you have and do whatever you need to do for that number of terms. Again, two is a formula, three is AC method, four is grouping. Okay. So with grouping, what you're going to do, and again, this can be taught in a variety of different ways. I keep tweaking it every year. I group the first two together and the last two together. And the only difference is how I group them. Some people use parentheses. I just underline them. And I'm going to say, what is my GCF for the first group? I have 2x cubed, and I have negative x squared. So I don't have any numbers in common, but I do have variables in both. So you're going to take your variable out with the smaller of the exponents, so x squared. So that's going to come out. Left over, you're going to have 2x cubed divided by x squared. Sorry, x squared. 2x cubed divided by x squared. 2x and negative x squared divided by x squared. <coughs> Excuse me. Remember, anything divided by itself is 1. So it's not just going to disappear. Anything divided by itself is 1. A negative divided by itself is negative 1. So make sure you keep that second term. Then for your second group, you're going to do the same thing. What is the GCF? We have negative 8x and we have positive 4. So our GCF is going to be 4. However, there's a second part to that. Anytime your first term is negative, you're always going to take a negative out. Essentially, your GCF will always have the same sign as the first term. So if your first term is positive, your GCF was positive. If your first term is negative, your GCF should be negative. So negative 4 comes out. Left over, you're going to divide negative 8x divided by negative 4. It's going to give you a positive 2x. Positive 4 divided by negative 4. Remember, anything divided by itself is positive 1. At this stage, your parentheses should be the same. If they're not, 
most likely you took out a common factor, but not the greatest common factor. Every once in a while, the mistake is up here. You didn't take the GCF out correctly at the very beginning, but it's still a GCF issue. Most of the time, about 95% of the time, when your parentheses come out incorrect with grouping, it is a GCF problem. Go look at every GCF and make sure that there wasn't a common factor left over inside the parentheses. Here, ours are the same, so we're good to go. You have the same parentheses. We are going to GCF those out to x minus 1. And left over, we have an x squared and a minus 4. Okay? Step 1, GCF. Step two, how many terms? Step three, can I factor more? So you're going to look inside each set of parentheses, 2x minus 1. Can that factor any more? 2x minus 1, there's no GCF. It's two terms, so that means it needs to be either the difference of squares or the sum and difference of cubes. There's no squares and no cubes at all in here, so it cannot factor more. That is just going to go to your answer. Then we're going to look at the next set, x squared minus 4. Can it factor more? Is there a GCF? No. How many terms is it? Notice I'm doing these same steps. How many terms is it? It's two terms. Therefore, it needs to be a formula if there's no GCF. Is it the difference of squares or the sum and difference of cubes? Do you have squares or cubes in here? I have a square. So if we're going to do x squared minus 4, and we're trying to do the difference of squares, A, it must be a difference. Difference means subtraction. It is subtraction, so we're good to go there. A wants to know what is being squared. With x squared, x is being squared. Then it wants to know what is being squared here. 4, 2 is being squared. 2 squared equals 4. And your difference of squares formula says a squared minus b squared will always factor to a minus b, a plus b. x minus 2, x plus 2. So over here we get x minus 2 x plus 2, because inside x minus 2 could not factor more. There's no GCF, no squares, no cubes. x plus 2, there's no GCF, no squares, no cubes. So step 1, GCF. Step 2, how many terms? Step 3, can anything factor more? I was telling you my developmental math students get very frustrated when I throw this x squared minus 4 or any difference of squares that happens to pop up throughout the questions. They feel like I'm just being mean, but I will tell you when you get to college algebra, in order for the problems to do different things, this will pop up all the time. So we need to be used to that last step of can anything factor more? Because it will happen all the time when you're graphing polynomial functions in college algebra. So Keep an eye out for them. They tend to sneak up on us. And it's really easy to get convinced that you're done and not do this last step of can anything factor more. Okay? So quick recap. First step, always GCF. Once you take the GCF out or determine that there's not one, identify how many terms are left. Again, if there's two, it's a formula. Difference of squares or some are difference of cubes. If it's three, you do the AC method. I have additional videos to help with that. And if it's four terms, you do the grouping process. AC method, half of AC method is grouping. People get stuck in the second half because they don't realize it's the same thing. So you're going to end up doing grouping anyway. So something you really need to know. And then at the very end, can anything factor more? So. Any questions? Let me know. Comment away. Thank you.